again to Yuri Giant 120. Uh, this is Jeff Cliff, and today we're going to be talking about Venn diagrams. Uh, I haven't got any script or anything to go with this, so uh, hopefully it'll be short and sweet. Uh, but what Venn diagrams are uh, is a way of telling uh, when you're talking about the multiple things and or events where with multiple causes or uh, things that have multiple parts. Uh, or could have multiple parts uh, to basically tell which uh, are shared, uh, which causes are shared, uh, which are functional, which are not, uh, what's on and what's off, what's true and what's false, uh, in, a, in a way when there's multiple things going on. And so how it's going to work is we're going to draw a picture of a circle. And this circle is going to represent some property or some event or some something. We're going to call it A. And then we're going to draw another circle, which may or may not come into contact with this first circle. And we're going to call this B. So uh, in this case, let's say this is days that I have coffee and days that I'm capable of coherent conversation. And in this case, the only days where I have a coherent conversation are the ones that I have coffee. So we're going to shade in this middle part. So what we just did there is we had a way of describing two uh, events or, 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 or things that happen in a relationship between the two uh, in that there's the days where I have neither coffee nor coherent conversation, and then there are days where I have just the coherent conversation and no coffee, and then there are days that I have coffee but no coherent conversation, so the area within this, bound by this circle, that is not included in this circle, and then there's this also this middle area that's shaded, where the days that I have both coffee and coherent conversation. Now, of course, you can have many kinds of these diagrams, or many, uh, I guess, uh, combinations of circles that may or may not intersect in very complex ways. So, for example, we could have one with three circles, where only two of them are intersecting a third, uh, and these never actually intersect each other. And so let's see what we could have. We have maybe days that it's raining, uh, what, what do we have there? A and C being separate, uh, let's say days that I'm wet, and days that I'm dry can't be wet and dry at the same time, so these should always be separate. Uh, so days when it's not raining, sometimes I'm wet. Maybe I'll have a, uh, a hose pointed at me or something. But basically you could say, uh, you know, ask what days are am I wet? And so you could, you could highlight the days that you are wet. Or you could ask, what days am I wet or dry? Although it's, it's I, I guess in this case, it's you know, kind of hard to imagine what would be neither wet or dry, which would be most of this outside space. Maybe we could just say medium. But which is another point, which is that you can imagine the entire picture as being one circle, in this case D. And so, again, we're, we're kind of splitting this, this picture up into uh, situations or areas that could happen. So 
these are the exclusive uh, uh, possible rolls on a six-sided dice. And let's say you're you're trying to roll to get a high number. So this this circle would be the high number circle. And you, you could start to start shading in uh, things that intersect. So you could say, is it a high number and a three? You could shade that one. These diagrams really only start coming into usefulness when you start being able to uh, look at the way that things intersect, where they intersect, where multiple things intersect uh, in many different ways. So. You get something like this, where you have five different properties or things that are happening and you can start shading in only maybe one or a couple uh, ways that they can interact. So this particular shading would represent where D and C happen or are operative or, or shared, and where A, B, and D, but not C, are shared, but no other case. So it's where the highlight happens, that's what's being talked about with this particular picture. You're, being, you're referring to it. It's, it's like using a word or a name, but it's just a different way of noting or, or pointing out a certain uh, set or a certain um, combination of things, in this case, where D, E, but not A and B, like this part, or this part here, which is, again, D, A, and B, but not C. So, let's see if we can think of very quickly something that would make that make sense. Uh, it gets more difficult to come up with these on the fly the more of these you add. Um, In this case, if this stands for copy or days I have copy, this stands for days I have coherent conversations, this uh, uh, stands for uh, times that I roll dice, uh, this stands for times that I get a high roll, uh, then only the times when I roll the dice and I get a low roll, because B is not included, where I've had copy or where I've had coffee and have coherent conversations, but I have not rolled dice and have not rolled high, uh, then something happens. Or, or then, you know, that's the thing being talked about in this particular case. So, uh, again, this is just a, a tool of, of talking about things. It, 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 it gets a little bit more useful uh, when you uh, start getting really deep into Boolean logic and want to talk about very complicated uh, these circuits or um, outcomes, but in general, it's a useful thing to know about. Uh, if you are still curious, uh, we can, of course, link you to more examples online, um, but hopefully that is a at least a, a brief introduction to the concept of Venn diagrams. So, uh, hopefully you enjoy. Again, this has been Eurigina 120. I'm Jeff Quick and uh, hope to see you in the next video.